It begins in New York, but also Virginia, and Maryland, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Delaware, and DC. The Chesapeake Bay watershed spans 64,000 square miles. This is the area of land where rain or snow ultimately flows to the Chesapeake. Everybody is in a watershed. The stream that goes through your neighborhood, you can see how it's connected to the bay. Whatever starts way up there and comes down here ends up going down to the bay. The Susquehanna River, for example, travels hundreds of miles through cities and farmland, and pollution in one place is carried downstream. The unity of the whole thing, there is no such thing as just a part of the bay. What happens in every part of the bay affects every other part. Well, I can remember when uh, Chesapeake Bay was uh, relatively clear water. Now all of that really has changed. I think we have Mac Mathias to thank because he was one of the early people that said we got to do something about this body of water. The, the oyster take is down dramatically from what it was at the beginning of the century. Uh, fish are harder to find. Things were not looking very good in the 1960s and 70s. That's when our aquatic grasses just crashed. That's when that water clarity really started to get bad. Oysters, blue crabs, striped bass, brook trout, hunting, fishing, hiking, biking, kayaking, canoeing. All of those things are really important to both the economy and the recreation in the area. We've got species diversity, of course, but we've got tons of diversity of people. I first experienced the Chesapeake Bay from a work boat. On another level, it's this place where my kids can go and my members can go and find a level of peace. I've grown up on this land. I followed my dad all around on it. I'm a fourth generation farmer. You know, I like to fish and crab and I want it to be there for my kids and my grandchildren. The Chesapeake Bay and the tributaries is not just a way to make a living. It, it's a tradition, it's a way of life. It's kind of in your blood. The oysters act as a filter to clean the water, so the more oysters come back, the better the water quality would be. In 1975, at the urging of Senator Mathias, Congress funded a five-year study of the Bay's failing health coordinated by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. In 1983, the Chesapeake Bay Commission sponsored a conference at George Mason University. And that was the point at which the governor signed the first Bay Agreement. That was the beginning of the Chesapeake Bay program. The 83 Agreement was not even a page in length, and they were just trying to understand what's wrong with the Chesapeake. We did all kinds of outreach for the Bay program to explain in lay language what was going on with the Bay and get, get feedback on proposed actions. The Alliance for the Chesapeake Bay also made sure that there was a citizen monitoring effort very early on so that citizens could get involved not only in how they can help restore the Bay but also in monitoring the success. As the Bay agreements have evolved over time they've gotten more comprehensive in terms of trying to capture what are all the different activities us humans carry out on the land that could influence local waters and influence the Chesapeake? This great partnership of so many different federal agencies, state agencies and governments, as well as community foundations and nonprofit organizations, all work together to understand better what's happening in the Chesapeake Bay so that we can make the decisions that will actually help improve the Bay's health. So all the monitoring we do is coordinated through the Chesapeake Bay Program Partnership. We use the monitoring data, one, to improve models that we have to simulate conditions in the bay and its watershed. And those models are used to help say, where do we need to reduce nutrients coming into the bay and by how much to improve conditions for fish. We also then use the monitoring to try to focus where we want to put the restoration efforts. And then finally, we, we use it over time to say, is the bay and its watershed getting better as we put all these efforts in to reduce pollution? As we went into the 2014 Chesapeake Bay Watershed Agreement, the ask to put goals in there, to put objectives, leaving flexibility about how we got there. We do things more than just water quality. It's about really ecosystem management. We also understood that to be successful, we needed a more diverse group of partners, a more diverse group of leaders that reflected the cultures that we have across the Chesapeake itself. To have these states come together in the Bay Watershed, it's the only way we're gonna keep the Bay alive and productive for a long time. 